Hey YouTube, my name is Dave and I'm here to give you an introduction on how to use credit card sign up bonuses to leverage with airline frequent flyer miles to give you nearly free travel anywhere in the world. If that sounds good, let's get started with some basics. All right, so this is the introduction to travel rewards brought to you by me, Dave. You can email me if you have any questions at davethemileshelper at gmail.com. I will do my best to get back to you and answer simple questions. All right, let's talk about what Travel Rewards is. It's a system of using credit card sign-up bonuses to leverage with airline frequent flyer miles to maximize the opportunities within the systems that those companies have set up. Now, these are their programs. Hotel stays are also a part of Travel Rewards, but for the purposes of this short class, we will focus on air travel. Like any new skill, there is upfront education on how these things work and how to utilize them efficiently and legitimately. Working within the guidelines set forth here it should actually help your credit and not hurt it. What Travel Rewards is not, it's not an excuse to carry a credit card balance. Never carry a credit card balance. If you can't pay your balance off in full every month, then you're not ready for this. A reason to spend more than you normally would. Don't go out and buy major expenses just so you can get the rewards for it. It is not a good plan. This is not for people with bad credit. You need a minimum credit score of 700 and 750 should qualify you for the best cards. Don't start the program if you're going to need a loan in the near future and you are just barely above a credit score that you will need uh, or will help improve your rate. Wait until that's done and then start this program. The key to success with award travel is flexibility. Award travel is not always very flexible except Southwest Airlines. We love them. The flexibility needs to come from your end. For example, if you are going to your cousin's wedding in New Zealand and you have three weeks notice, you're most likely not going to get a very good uh, award redemption with the airlines directly, but you could always use the online travel portals to find these flights. The redemption value is less, but you'll still get better value using these points than paying cash. We will cover online portals later in the presentation. There are three types of travel reward cards. Fixed value cards, co-branded airline or hotel cards, and transferable points cards. Let's talk about fixed value cards. These offer, after meeting a minimum spend on a credit card, a credit amount that can be applied to travel spending made on that card. These are the most simple types of travel rewards cards to use, but do not offer as much value as other types. Redemptions on fixed value cards. Redemptions on fixed value cards are as simple as Purchase your travel on your fixed value card. Wait until the purchase posts on your account. Use your earned miles, in quotations, because they're really not miles, to erase the cost of your ticket. Now let's talk about co-branded airline and hotel cards. These are offered through different banks. It matters which banks. Different banks have different rules. Once you reach the spending requirement for the sign-up bonus, the bonus miles are added to your frequent flyer account for that airline to use as you would like. You should use these points sooner than later, otherwise if they are ignored, they could expire, sometimes in as little as 12 months, if there is no activity in your frequent flyer account for that airline. These miles cannot be transferred to other airlines, however flights can be redeemed with partner airlines. The best value in redeeming miles is in business class. Redeeming airline miles is as simple as logging onto an airline's website and searching for award availability. Award availability is almost always easier to find in economy, but if you know where to look, business redemptions are out there, especially if you're flexible on your travel. Let's talk about transferable points cards. Once you reach the minimum spending requirement for the sign-up bonus, the bonus points for that card are added to your account. You can use those in a few different ways. Here's a Chase Ultimate Rewards example. These points can be redeemed in three ways, listed here in increasing level of value. Number one, they can be turned into cash to erase some of the spending you've made with your card. This is not limited to travel costs. This is the least valuable way to redeem your points. Points are worth one cent, so a 50,000 point bonus will earn you $500 off your purchases. This is a lot better than your random department store credit card, but we can do a lot better. Number two, they can be redeemed for travel through Chase's online travel portal, much like Expedia or Priceline. This allows you to look for good deals on flights and because you are in the eyes of the airline buying these flights, you still accumulate miles for the purchased flight that you can use another time with that airline. 
If using points from a Chase Sapphire Preferred card, these points are valued at 1.25 cents each. This 50,000 point bonus will bring you 625 off reward travel purchased through their portal. But again, we can do better than that if we're flexible. Number three, the most valuable way to use these transferable points is to transfer to an airline partner that has award availability on a route that you want to fly. Never transfer your points to an airline unless you are immediately booking an award flight on that airline using your points. And you need to assure that the award availability is there before transferring. Transferring points is always one way. Once sent to an airline, you cannot send them anywhere else and your options are now much more limited. On our upcoming flight to Australia on Singapore Air in business class, we transferred 204,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points and were able to get 3.9 cents per point on the redemption. That's outstanding. There are five programs offering these transferable points. They are Chase Ultimate Rewards, Marriott Rewards, Amex Membership Rewards, Capital One, and City Thank You. Let's talk about why Chase is so loved. Generous point bonuses, solid list of transfer partners, both airline and hotel, and a good selection of great cards. These are the airline partners of Chase Ultimate Rewards for 2019. They change yearly, so you should check back uh, online. You can just Google Chase Ultimate Rewards Transfer Partners to find out what their current partners are. These are it for 2019. Let's talk about an example of one airline. United is a transfer partner of Chase Ultimate Rewards, but United is a part of Star Alliance. Star Alliance has all of these airlines that can be booked just with United points. This is just to demonstrate how many different airlines can be flown using just United miles. So where do you start? Definitely start with what we call the Chase Gauntlet. Let's talk about the 524 rule. 524 rule is Chase's rule that determines whether they will approve you for a card. Now, there are other things to consider, your credit, that kind of thing, but let's talk about just in terms of the 524 rule. You will not be approved for any Chase credit card if you have had five or more applications for credit cards for any bank approved in the last 24 months. Now, this only applies to your personal credit so if you have a business account and you have business credit cards, these usually don't count against you for Chase. Next, let's think about some other things. Do you have a spouse or partner that you can plan travel with? Are there kids in the equation that will be traveling with you? Is domestic travel a priority or is it international? How many cards have you opened in the last 24 months? Never add a spouse or travel partner as an authorized signer on your cards, except possibly your kids. It will count against their 524 status. All right, let's talk about the holy grail of travel rewards. Let's talk about the Southwest Airlines Companion Pass. If you earn 110,000 qualified miles or 100 qualifying flights in one calendar year, you can get this pass. Currently, the bonuses on the Southwest business card and either of the personal cards can add up to nearly the 110,000 qualified miles if you spend enough on the cards. Paying property or income taxes with your credit card are great ways to make this happen, although there's usually about a 2 or 3% fee on there. The bonuses offered on these cards change often, so definitely check the current bonuses when making your plan for the companion pass. Email me and I can help. To earn the pass, you need to earn the bonuses on both cards in one calendar year. I cannot stress how important that is. If you get bonus on one in December and you get bonus on one in January, you are back to square one. You're still going to have the, the points for those bonuses, but you will not have the companion pass. If you do qualify for the companion pass, you'll get it for the rest of the year that you qualify for the pass and the full year after that. Apply for these cards together in November or December and complete the minimum spend on these cards in January or February in order to have the companion pass for two full years. The beauty of it is you don't have to buy the companion pass with the 110,000 miles you earn. You get both. Let's look at a sample companion pass booking. This is a, an example of Reno to San Diego, a round trip for pass holder and a companion for 15,912 points and $22.40. You could get six similar reward flights with just the points earned with the pass. 
Not a bad deal for about $200 in annual fees. If you have two kids, your spouse could also get the pass and your whole family of four could go on each trip. So if you're lucky enough not to have opened any cards in the last 24 months, this is how I recommend you start. You notice all five of these are chase cards, and that's for a reason. As we talked about earlier, Chase has the 524 rule, which can limit availability to these cards after you've opened five cards in the last 24 months. Right now, and this changes, these are my favorite five chase cards. Southwest Rapid Rewards Premier Credit Card. Combine that with the Southwest Rapid Rewards Premier Business Credit Card, and you're very close to getting that companion pass we just talked about. Chase Sapphire Preferred Card, probably the best single card in all of Travel Rewards. The Chase Inc. Business Preferred Credit Card. This is by far the best business credit card on the market. 80,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points after spending 5,000 in the first three months. 80,000 Ultimate Rewards points will get you a long way, and these are very, very valuable. Lastly, the Marriott Bonvoy Boundless Credit Card. These points are very, very valuable in that they're very flexible. You can use these both for staying at Marriott properties, but also you can transfer these directly to over 40 airline partners. Now, they reduce in volume from three to one. So if you transfer 90,000 points, you're going to get 30,000 after they get to the airline for most of those airlines. So they're not as valuable in that way uh, per point, but they're very flexible and you want a lot of Marriott Bonvoy points. So let's say you've opened up a few chase cards and now you're over your 524 limit. Where do you go from here? Well, these are three of my favorite non-chase cards. Let's go through them one by one. The American Airlines Advantage Platinum Select MasterCard. This card gives you 60,000 American miles after 3,000 in spend in the first 90 days. This is a great card. These points are valuable and uh, you can get a long way on 60,000 American miles. Number two, the Alaska Airlines Mileage Plan Visa. 30,000 Alaska miles with 1,000 in spend in the first 90 days. This also includes a one-time per year $99 companion pass. Alaska Airline miles are actually very valuable. It takes less of them to go and take some pretty long trips on some pretty good airlines. So I really value Alaska miles and you should too. Number three, Barclay Card Arrival Plus World Elite MasterCard. This is a travel eraser card like the Capital One Venture card, but is really valuable. So you'll get $800 worth of travel eraser value after spending $5,000 in the first 90 days. Here's an example of why this could be really useful. We recently took a trip to Thailand, and for five days we stayed in this really nice beachfront resort. It wasn't a part of any chain, not a Marriott or Hyatt, so you couldn't use points directly. But we booked a $900 stay for the five days. We used this $800 to erase, and that stay ended up costing us $100. All right, now let's talk about redemptions. Now that you have all these points and miles, how are you going to use them? Let's talk about the bad news. The world of redemptions is seemingly infinitely complicated, much more so than the earning of the points and miles. Now let's talk about the good news. You don't need to know everything about redeeming flights to every destination, only a reasonable amount of info about the destination that you are targeting. There are a huge amount of award travel blogs out there. Google for the recent articles regarding your destination and see how to best do it. Also, you can hire a service to find the best reward travel for you. If you're busy and you don't want to spend the time on finding award availability, then delegate it. Let's talk about card management. Most cards allow you to earn the bonus multiple times. For Chase Sapphire, for example, you can cancel the card after using the points and reapply for the card 24 months after you last received the bonus to earn the 50,000 points again. Some cards allow you to do this in as little as 24 months after earning the last bonus. Keep track of when your annual fee will come due. If you have already used the points or miles, consider closing the card or at least negotiate some extra points in return for paying the annual fee. They want your business and they will try to keep it. Never cancel a card if you still have points in your account. You will lose them. Points and miles sometimes expire. If you have built up points, use them. If they sit dormant in an account, either within the bank or within an airline, they might expire. Most of the time, if there is some account activity, either points going in or points going out of your account, this will reset the expiration for a year. 
Each program is different though, so know their policy or just use the points and miles in travel. Examples of different travel award game plans. Let's talk about three different ways to do that. We'll call the first one cash back, the low hanging fruit. Next, dipping your toe in the water. And then lastly, going big. The low hanging fruit. If the complexity of travel rewards seems a bit too much, consider a simple option. There are two chase cards offering 850 and 530 respectively for opening their cards and meeting minimum spend. These are the Chase Inc. Preferred and the Chase Sapphire Preferred cards. Simply open these cards, put your normal spend on them for a few months to get the bonuses. Use the cash back to wipe out $1,380 worth of spending. Pay one annual fee of $95 and then cancel the cards and walk away. $1,285 for about two hours of cumulative work. Go out for sushi and drinks for two people once a month for a year on Chase, and repeat this every other year. Alright, now let's talk about dipping the toe in the water. So if you're interested to give this a try, but maybe you don't want to go too overboard, here's a nice easy start with four cards. Number one, Chase Sapphire Preferred card. 54,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points after your 4,000 spend in three months. There is a $99 annual fee, but it's waived in the first year. 2. Southwest Rapid Reward Business Premier Card. 62,000 Southwest points after $3,000 spend in 3 months. The $99 annual fee is not waived. Number 3. Capital One Venture Card. $500 in travel reimbursement. There is a $99 annual fee, but it is waived in the first year. And lastly, the Chase Inc. Business Preferred. 80,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points with a $5,000 minimum spend in three months. The $95 annual fee is not waived. All right, let's talk about what that would get you. That would get you one round trip flight to Europe in economy class using Sapphire and Ink points. Consider Europe redemptions often have fuel charges associated with them. You can work around that, but it limits options a bit to US airlines. Number two, a $300 hotel reimbursement while you're there, plus $200 covering taxes and fees on the flights. This all due to the Capital One Venture $500 travel credit. Number three, at least two, maybe three round trips on Southwest for one person. Number four, leftover ultimate rewards points for possibly another hotel stay. This could easily be done every other year. Total annual fees for year one, adds up to $194. Total travel value, $2,800. Now let's talk about the third idea of going big. This is our family's plan. These are a sample of my cards. I actually just finished going through this round and I ended up having about 15 cards in the first about 20 months or so that I was doing this. These are the cards that my wife is working on. While I work on my cards, she's resting hers. When I'm done, then she starts applying for her cards. That way, we alternate the minimum spend, and it helps to make that minimum spend on each card. Now let's talk about what that kind of program will yield. Number one, San Francisco to Singapore on Singapore Airlines in a brand new A350 in business class. 24-hour layover in a high-end hotel for that night. Singapore to Perth on Singapore Airlines brand new 787-10 in business class, plus six days staying in Perth with friends. Perth to Sydney in business class on a Qantas A330. Six days in a Sydney VRBO paid for with Capital One travel eraser miles. Sydney to San Francisco in business class, upper deck on the majestic Qantas 747-400. At least six domestic round trips on Southwest Airlines for two people with the Companion Pass. Two round trips for two to Cabo or domestically on Alaska with the Companion Pass. Two more round trips to Europe in economy with five to six nights of hotels covered. Out-of-pocket costs. For this going big plan, total annual fees for year one, $1,228. Fees for paying taxes on credit cards about $575. Taxes and fees for those flights we booked with miles, about $900. Total out-of-pocket costs for all of that traveling, $2,703. Estimated retail value of that travel, $33,000. We're traveling for a 92% discount. So after getting all those cards, it's time to take a break. Once we finish getting these bonuses, we will take two years off 
from getting any new cards so that we can reset Chase's 524 counter, have a rest from this program, and travel like crazy. We will, however, be negotiating our annual fees, closing or downgrading cards where appropriate, and protecting any points and miles balances in our accounts. What to pay with a credit card? Well, you can pay your rent using a payment service called Plastic. You can pay your mortgage also with Plastic, but right now it's only working with MasterCard. You can pay property taxes, federal and some state income taxes. There's usually a fee of around 2.5%, but it's well worth it if you're working on a minimum spend for a bonus. You can pay your utilities. You can pay groceries, restaurants, gas, the obvious things. You can pay travel expenses, but hopefully those will be decreasing sharply. You can pay business expenses if you're a business owner or if you have a side hustle. You can do what's called manufactured spend. Now that's a subject for a whole different class, but look it up if you're curious. Are you ready to start your own program? Here are some steps you need to take to gather the necessary information. Open a free account with creditkarma.com. Is your credit score at least 700? Note your cards that have been opened in the last 24 months. Note any travel-related cards that you currently have open. If you already have cards that you may want in your plan, you may need to cancel them now. Ask your spouse or travel partner if they will be on board for getting cards for this program too. Discuss your preferred destinations so that you're on the same page. Educate yourself. Read through either the Frequent Miler tutorial, which is great, or complete the Travel Miles 101 class, or both. This will give you a stronger working knowledge of the systems. I would love to refer your cards to you. I can get a referral bonus for certain cards. If you do decide to get into this, I would greatly appreciate it if you would apply using the referral links in the notes below for this YouTube video. This can be a part of your overall plan, which I am happy to help you put together based on your choice of destinations. I will work hard to ensure the referral I send you is always the best deal that is publicly available, even if that means I don't get a referral out of it. I would also be happy to send you a copy of my Excel spreadsheet to help you get organized. Just email me at davethemileshelper at gmail.com and I'll send you a blank, outlined copy of the spreadsheet that I use to organize my cards, travel site logins, and vendor auto pay updates. Questions? I'm glad to help. In any way I can, if you're trying to figure out which cards to get first or which cards are best for certain destinations, just email me, davethemileshelper at gmail.com. I hope you got a lot out of this video. This really is just an introduction. There's a lot more to this, but you got to start somewhere and it is absolutely worth it if you want to see the world. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.